right, so I'm out again, boys, letting the truck warm up. I tried something completely different for this torque management thing. Uh, this kind of started in my head as like an idea that I didn't think I was even going to care about, but I'm kind of getting interested in it, so I try, I'm trying something different. So what I did was I set up two outputs. I set an output for the 1-2 shift and an output for the 2-3 shift, not using like hardware outputs, it's just a software output. So I'm not using, like actually burning one of the wire outputs. So just created two outputs that create a pulse signal. So you have a delay time and an on time for each shift. So each output that's created is has three parameters that need to be met, 75% throttle position. It needs to be above gear one and below gear two. So that would be second gear, 100% throttle. And what happens when that is activated, it has a 0.3 second delay before the timer starts and then it is on for 0.7 seconds so basically it, when it changes gear you see the little blue line up it commands the change it's 0.3 seconds until it starts to pull timing and then there's a 1d table that's activated that pulls the timing for that set duration so basically you have a delay and an on time that's pulling timing based on seeing the gear change. So when it goes, when it commands the gear, it has the delay, and then it's on for a certain amount of seconds, which is your actual shift point, shift time. So I'm gonna test it, see if it works. And then at that point, you could keep your timing table the same, how much you wanted to pull. And then if you needed to change it, you could just change that delay and that on time. So that's how I think it's working in my head. So I'm gonna try it. If you see this video, that means it's uh, it's doing something. So this will be no boost. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna test it because I feel like that's probably the most accurate data that I have is no boost. And. Uh, Easiest to replicate, I guess, so I can compare between the two. reaction to it yeah dude that's like almost fucking perfect yes it looks really good so it right at the peak right at the rpm peak it pulled timing all right so it did work I just had to shift the times a little bit so I put the start time on the two three shift about three tenths earlier three tenths of a second and I put the start time or I, I changed the duration on the one two shift uh, I forget what I changed it but it was like two or three tenths I made it a little bit shorter because it still had the timing pull for like two or three seconds two or three tenths of a second after the gear change was finished so I'll dial this stuff in then we can go back and look at the logs Okay, so this torque management deal, I think I kind of feel like it's working well enough to show what I did now today. So essentially what I'm trying to do is replicate the torque management that happens on the stock ECU to keep the transmission alive. So you can see right here at the, the start of the RPM drop, 
it pulls a bunch of timing out of it. So it's pulling timing the entire duration of the shift drop and the gear change, and then it starts to put the timing back in it and continues to come up. So that's what I was trying to replicate. So here's kind of what I ended up with today after uh, a few pulls and some adjustment. So it comes up right at the beginning of the gear change. It pulls timing. So this is the timing pull. And this is my 1-2 torque management. And then this one here is a 2-3 torque management. So I have two separate ones set up. I'll show you the tables. But it basically, right at the beginning of the gear change, it pulls the timing, and then right at the end of the gear change, puts the timing back in, and then here's the 2-3 shift, same thing. So this one I could probably adjust a little bit more. You could see it kind of put it back in, and this is completely adjustable. So 19, this was one of the first ones when it actually started to work. So you can see it finished the gear change, saw the timing out of it, and then it put it back in. So what I did here was I actually reduced the amount of time that this timing pole was on. But now I think I should probably go back to something a little bit closer to this one. And then here would be a, a bad example. The gear change started, starts to come down, and then it hits it right at the end. So basically what I had to do was change the delay time. So it started earlier and then increase the on time. But going back to this last example here. So this was one pull, so this is all the same data log. So you can see right at the top, it starts to pull timing, right at the end, puts it back in, and then I didn't make it to the two, three shift. So the way that I did this was I set up a timer, like a PWM timer that would reference the gear change. So it's basically seeing the AT gear change happening. So it's going, you can see right up here, gear change. So it's going from one to two. So as soon as this goes from one to two, it starts the delay, and then the delay happens, it starts the timing pull, and then you have your on time for your duration, and then it puts it back in. So then the same thing is happening when it goes from two to three over here. So the way that I did this was setting up a one two shift and a two three shift output, set it on PWM output, no pin, because there's no hardware, it's just a software output. So it's not using any, any of the ECU pins. So you're not actually burning an output. So for example, the one, two shift, go into configure. And then what I did, I have three parameters for this to be on. So three input triggers set to all, so they all have to be met. AT gear above one, AT gear below three. So that means it's in gear two. So when it activates gear two, it's going to start the timer, but it also needs to see throttle position above 75%. So I'm sure you could modify some of this stuff, but the big thing is that when it goes above one, but it's still below three, meaning it's going into second gear, it starts the timer. So the timer I have set to 0.3 seconds. So start activation delay is set to 0.3 seconds. And then the active time is 0.7 seconds. So if we look at where this switches to gear two, and we look at the time up here, 144, basically 144.9, and then we go to where that starts to pull timing, you're at 145.2. So there's your 0.3 seconds. And then your on time is 0.7 seconds. So then if you do the math from 145.2, over to where it puts the timing back in. You're at 145.8, so you're basically at 0.7 seconds there. So that's all that that's doing. So this is your start time and your duration. And then the PWM setup had to be set up just so it'll actually activate it. So I just set, set this at fixed, 50% duty cycle, and yet you could probably pick any axis you want, it doesn't really matter. You just want to see information in this table so it activates that output. Because you're not actually you're not actually controlling anything like you would with a boost controller like duty cycle. You're just it just wants to see value in this table so it activates that output. So once that's all done, 
basically did I, I, the same thing for the one two shift and the two three shift. I set up a 1D table for each gear change. So it's simple 1 2 torque management, and then this table, table 2, is 2 3 torque management. So basically, what this is is a timing offset. I picked RPM for axis. You could probably pick a, a, any axis because it's not actually referencing any RPM, it's just telling this table that it wants to pull 15 degrees. So I just put 15 degrees across the whole table. So that's why I don't think the, ax the axis here really matters. So then I did a switched enable, and I want this to be enabled when the one two shift is enabled. So one two shift is that output table. So when this is active, when this output is active, this table will be active and pull 15 degrees, and it's going to pull 15 degrees for the same duration that you have set up in this one, two, shift table, if that makes sense. So basically you're creating the output, telling it that it's shifting gears, you're telling it how long you want to delay it before you start, and then you're telling it how long you want it to be on, and then you're setting up a table here that's going to reference that output, and then pull timing. That's pretty much what it is. So that's what I'm using here and it actually seems like it works pretty decent and it matches what the stock ECU is doing at the same time during the gear change. So I feel like, uh, it, I feel like it's working pretty well. So I'm sure there's probably a bunch of other different ways to do this. So feel free to poke holes in it or if you can try to simplify it. So yeah, it's really not too complicated to set up. So again, you're just taking your shift command, telling it when to start and telling it how long to pull timing for. That's basically it.